Now, tomorrow is Saturday, October the 1st, 2022, which is Nigeria's 62nd independence anniversary. But it's also a day that supporters of Peter Obi, the Labour Party's presidential candidate, will be converging on Lagos for what has been tagged Obi Dati 4 Million Man March to create greater awareness for the former governor of Anambra State, who just on Wednesday kicked off his campaign for next year's presidential election at the Langtang Stadium in Jos, the capital of Plateau State. Well, to give us a better view of what to expect tomorrow in Lagos, we're now being joined by popular human rights and political activist and entertainer Charlie Boy and Dr. Moses Paul, Assistant National Youth Leader for the Labour Party. It's great to have you. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon. Uh, straight great into to be it. Here. Yeah, it's good to have you. We've already seen a little bit of litigation back and forth about the routes and the areas that mm -hmm. you will be allowed uh, to uh, to proceed through. So, what's the plan for tomorrow? What have what have you given a, has been given a green light dr moses yeah of course there's going to be movement from different places and of course we're going to honor the fact that um we're not going to be stopping at the at the gate at the lucky yes but i mean processions can go through there um but the convergence center is going to be at the Suruleri um stadium that's where we're going to take the procession i mean the bulk of the people are going to be there and um we're going to do what we do best is about uh, we're marching for uh, for good governance. We're marching to say that enough of um, the subjugation, the pulverization, you know, the ineptitude, the inefficiency of all the things that we've suffered, the terrorism, the banditry, you know, all the things that have gone bad, you know, in this country. This is what we're standing up against. And that's what we're going to see. The will of the people is in their strength. Their strength is visible in their character. And you're going to see character tomorrow, you know, with the young people marching out, singing songs and uh, motivating and getting inspired, going beyond just ordinary citizens to what we call power citizens to hold account, leadership, you know, and governance. This is what tomorrow's march is going to be about. Well, so uh, to add to what he just said, you know, it's going to be like a cannibalish kind of thing, you know. Uh, like we always say, come and be inspired because they're going to be guest speakers and stuff like that, you know. And uh, you need to really understand that this battle is in their hands, you know. Like I've always maintained that the salvation of this country lies in the hands of his exceptional people. Who are those people? The youths. Fantastic. Now, of course, you're definitely, it definitely sounds like you're going to be starting strong. So how are you going to sustain that momentum after tomorrow? I mean, you saw what happened in Abuja, and it's going round. So the sustaining it is not even an issue because we're building beyond OB. We're building the next generation. My generation grew up under what you call the military rule. So we still get fierce more. And then you have the NSAS generation. But there's a generation after the NSAS, which is important. So we need to build their resolve. We need to be sharpen, you know, that ideology of discipline, of staying consistency. He's been there for over four decades, been consistent with a particular narrative. This is what we're doing, much more than the party, much more than the candidates. You know, Nigeria is evolving. Regardless of who emerges right now, Nigeria is not the same anymore. And that narrative needs to be strengthened. And that's what we're carrying all over the country. So it's going to be sustained as long as we're able to build that, that ideology. Once you can build that ideology, sustaining it is just... Yeah. How, how prepared are you for any any kind of you know to manage any situation? You, of course, there was that misinformation about the Lekki toll gate being what, um, the venue for your convergence, but that was already dismissed. That it was never on the agenda, but it will still happen in Lekki. How prepared are you, you know, for any any issues that might arise? Well, yeah, I mean, I mean they, he, what we are about. And I'll take it from what happened in Abuja. We cleaned after ourselves. We fed ourselves. You know, we look beyond the parochialism of religion, ethnicity, tribe, and anything that would lead to any rancor. We went beyond all of those things. And, of course, we held, you know, the, 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 uh, the ideology of brotherhood. You know, we stood together. And that's what I think will be seen tomorrow. So I'm, I'm, I, don't, I don't even think there's going to be any eventuality because the mindset has, is already built. We're here 
to support. We're here to strengthen. We're here to work. We are the government. This is what it is about, yeah. Now, speaking about we are the government, uh, maybe rather we are hopefully the government in waiting, referring to yourselves, uh, it, it seems as though the Surulere Stadium may not be 100% confirmed yet. Of course, it's an asset that has to be confirmed by the state. Uh, what's the situation with this and what are some of the, um, some, some of the things that have been put into place? If, uh, you know, later today or tomorrow we do find ourselves in a situation where uh, the state has not released this venue. Yeah, of course. I mean, talking with the chairman of the party, we've had meetings back and forth. Regardless of whatever happens, we're going to march. Whether we enter the stadium or we stay outside, we're going to march. The, 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 there is, there's no going back on this. This is the point. And we're not going to get violent. We're going to, we're bringing superior negotiations and intelligence to the table. If we can't do that, then we're not even worthy of being called the next generational leadership, you know. So whatever happens, whatever the government of the day decide, we're going to match. We're moving forward. So this we goes move. beyond the venue. Right? Oh, absolutely. So this is not about the venue. It's about the, the cause and, you know, sen sensitizing absolutely. Um, people. Now, I'm just wondering what what is the what is the biggest highlight you look forward to tomorrow when you're able if you're let's say you're not able to you know get in the stadium and all these things that you, all these um hindrances that you foresee actually manifest what do you hope to achieve tomorrow in in spite of all this what's the biggest i mean the, the biggest achievement tomorrow will be the narrative of understanding that the people who destroy us who kill us as as black people abroad they don't they don't they don't decipher they don't look at the differences between nigerians and ghanaians they don't look at the difference between ethiopians and rwandans or any other what they see is just blackness so they kill black you know we want that to resonate but it's also important to know that those who kill us at home they look they they divide us along the lines of our tribes along the lines of our religion they have no value for our brother our shared brotherhood these are the messages we're passing tomorrow we're saying that those who see the numbers who make calculations mathematical calculations who are the politicians that use us as tools for brigandage for destruction we're raising the value of consciousness for people to understand the difference between policy politics you know governance and leadership because these are the values we are raising. So it's a serious business for us tomorrow. We'll get on those trucks, we'll sing those songs, we dance together, but we're sending a strong message out that it's beyond all of these things. Because the reality that sits right now with the, the new Nigerians that we have is beyond any of the things that our parents have faced. And, and on that note, I'm glad you mentioned po uh, policy, politics, and so forth. Charlie Boy, I'll just turn to you at this moment. Let's talk a little bit about political soft power because uh, when we refer when we think about the use of the stadium for example some of these negotiations are you know an outcome of political soft power that your movement has been accused of not having people have accused the movement of uh, of being you know just young people What's before it was movement? Uh, the movement that will be marching tomorrow that's the labor party movement uh, the obidati four million man march uh, that, that is, is, not, is that not your movement? No. Okay, well, what do you stand for and why are you taking part just, and being vocal in this? I just want young people to finally realize that everything is in their power and in their hands. They've been sort of uh, brainwashed over the year that they don't have the voice, they don't have the power, they don't have the wherewithal to make this change. And nobody's going to make that change for them. So my own is to just make sure that I keep inspiring them to make sure that they, because if they are not at the table where their future is being discussed, then there's no future for them in this equation. And if they have to change that status quo, they have to take it back. It's not something, that, oh, oh yeah, we are tired. Okay, you young people can come take it over. The future belongs to the youth. The future belongs to the youth. For how long will they keep telling us this? So my job primarily is to 
escort my children to the stadium or to the street or wherever and to get people who know about the real situation on ground to talk to young people to inspire them to ginger them to encourage them that they're they're on the right path okay so finally finally in my lifetime i dare say the amumu don't do and enough is enough Awesome. So that's my role as the area father, okay? Because there's nothing that delights a father when he, have, when he has children who can represent, who can hold fort, you know? So I'm just here for the ginger. <laughs> Nicely Indeed. said. <laughs> Go ahead. All right, uh, Dr. Moses, Charlie Boy, this has been an absolute pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you for having us. Uh, we do wish you all the, the best with your marriage.